Hi guys, in this A-level IB chemistry video, it's going to be a pretty generic video to do with melting and boiling points of various different structures. So really talking about what we mean by melting and boiling and then comparing giant covalent structures with ionic structures and, and ones with weak intermolecular forces to include London forces, hydrogen bonding and dipole-dipole forces. So let's start by looking at what we mean by the term boiling point. This is obviously the temperature at which a substance boils. And so if we consider the change in state which is occurring, we can see that a liquid has turned into a gas. And actually what's happening is that the attractive forces between the particles are completely broken. And so if we consider the boiling point, we therefore got a good indication of the strength of the intermolecular forces, which remember is the forces which hold together particles or molecules. So we can compare boiling points of different substances and therefore understand how strong their intermolecular forces are. So boiling points do give a good idea of how strong intermolecular forces are. Now if we consider the melting point, which is obviously the temperature at which a substance melts, now in understanding exactly what's going on when solids melt, the crystal structure breaks down, however there are still some attractive forces between the particles. And so, do melting points give us a good idea of how strong intermolecular forces are? Well, not a particularly good idea, because unfortunately, the melting point is also determined by the way in which the particles are arranged in their crystalline state. And they'll also be affected by impurities, so the addition of impurities is likely to lower the melting point as it actually weakens the structure. So you can't really say that a melting point will give you a clear-cut idea of the strength of the intermolecular forces, because there are other factors which also have a role to play. So what have I written here? Well, melting points do give an idea of the strength of intermolecular forces, but firstly the arrangement of particles and secondly the addition of any impurities will also affect the boiling point and therefore you might not get a clear-cut idea of how strong those intermolecular forces are. Now we're going to compare various structures. So starting with giant covalent structures, which we now describe as being macromolecular. These have very high melting and boiling points, e.g. diamond, which melts at approximately 4,000 degrees. That's ridiculously high. Silicon dioxide melts at around 1,600 degrees Celsius. Don't forget the second allotrope of carbon, so you've got diamond as being one of them, but also graphite, which also melts at approximately 4,000 degrees. So extremely high melting points here. Why is that? Well, diamond in particular has a tetrahedral structure, and that means that each carbon atom is bonded to four others. And so it's made up of very many strong covalent bonds and each of these covalent bonds requires quite a lot of energy to break. Moving on to our second structure, which is giant ionic structures. Remember, for it to be an ionic structure, we need to have a positive ion being attracted to a negative ion. So remember that metals form positive ions, non-metals form negative ions. So we could use sodium chloride as an example here. Also magnesium oxide, so metals and non-metals being combined here. Now they also have high melting points, not ridiculously high, it tends to be less than 1000 degrees. So for sodium chloride, it's 801 degrees Celsius. For potassium chloride, it's 770 degrees Celsius. Why do they have relatively high melting points? Well, that's due to strong electrostatic forces of attraction between oppositely charged ions require a lot of energy to break. Now moving on to giant metallic structures. So as the name suggests, these are just made up of metals. Now on the whole, they have quite high melting points e.g. aluminium has a melting point of 660 degrees Celsius. 
magnesium has a melting point of 650 degrees Celsius. Why is this? Well, that's due to strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive metal ion and the sea of delocalized electrons. Now, do be aware that the group one metals, they obviously have low melting points. We're talking about elements such as lithium, sodium, potassium. Remember, they're soft, they have low density, they're really unusual metals. We're not going to go into why now, but just so that you don't think that I don't know that those metals have low melting points. This is just a general video about the fact that metals in general have high melting points. So simple covalent structures or molecules. Remember that there are three types of intermolecular force which exist between these molecules. Those are starting with the strongest, hydrogen bonding, followed by dipole-dipole forces. And then lastly, London forces. Hydrogen bonding is obviously the strongest. Dipole-dipole forces have intermediate strength and London forces are the weakest. If you want to know more about the differences between these intermolecular forces, you need to go and watch my separate videos on that. But I think it would be interesting to do a little bit of a comparison because if we pick three molecules that have a similar molecular mass, or MR, we're just going to compare their melting points and then we'll understand a bit more how important the type of intermolecular force that exists between them is. Okay, so we'll start by drawing propane. Prop meaning it has three carbons, it's an alkane, so it's saturated with hydrogens, only has single carbon bonds. That's a little bit of a recap for organic chemistry for you. Ethanol is an aldehyde, which means it has the C double bond O, H, so CHO functional group. Eth meaning it has two carbons. Let's just complete the molecule. And then ethanol is an alcohol, so it has the OH functional group. Eth, meaning that it has two carbons again. So again, I'm completing my molecule. Now, if we compare the MRs, so their molecular masses, very similar. 44, 44 versus 46. Remember, you can calculate that using the periodic table. Now, the all-important melting points. Well, propane has a very low melting point of minus 42 degrees Celsius. Ethanol has a melting point of 21 degrees Celsius, and then ethanol has a much higher melting point of 79 degrees Celsius. So what accounts for the differences? Well, we first need to consider their polarity. So are they polar molecules or not? Propane is non-polar, ethanol is polar, and ethanol is polar. So what type of bonding exists? Well, propane only has London forces, which remember I taught you was the weakest of all the intermolecular forces. Ethanol is a dipole-dipole molecule due to a permanent separation in the charges. And then lastly, looking at ethanol, not only have we got a polar molecule, but because we've got hydrogen being bonded to that highly electronegative element oxygen, then it means we have hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest of the three intermolecular forces.